So after the promise of material things of people wears out somehow, we may become spiritual and we look in spiritual spirituality for happiness. And very often when we come to that stage, we feel kind of special because we kind of figured it out that it's not the things. So we are maybe secretly a bit proud that we are kind of above the pack. Like, ah, yeah, are you still looking mm -hmm. for this happiness? in this thing it's not it but yeah you'll figure it out mm. i'm very spiritual now and it feels so much better to be spiritual than material mm -hmm. So at that point, eventually, hopefully, we'll see that what we often call spirituality, we think it's something more subtle, more fine, so to speak, than these things, these gross things, these material things. So spirituality often is associated with some special states, some angels with trumpets floating by and scrubbing our back with a nice brush. And we're like, oh, yeah, this is God. This is so good. Mm, I found it. Warm showers of stardust. Mm. Beautiful affirmations, positive thoughts. Maybe we'll find our bathroom and our kitchen, our bedroom full of little post-its. I am beautiful. I am whole. Abundance, well, is my reality. Money is energy and I am going to manifest it in my life and I will be so happy. And very often, very many in these times make special experiences, experience those beautiful states of body and mind. It's wonderful. I was really just joking, no, no judgment. This is just how things normally evolve. So we've all been there, so we can smile about it, maybe. From this physical reality, this material promise, and real people that will make me happy, we kind of progress when that doesn't work out into finding this happiness in this subtlety. States of body and mind. Firstly, maybe just 
positive thoughts and feelings. These are those affirmations we kind of create. We believe we can create happiness with through willpower. We just keep telling ourselves that we are happy and then we'll believe it eventually, hopefully, at least for a while. But through some way or other, like satsang, these meetings, eventually we may hear or, or, or get this intuition somehow ourselves from our own wisdom and our hearts that these subtle or not so subtle states of body or mind are still kind of outside. We're still looking with the the wrong way around. Those energies, thoughts, feelings, are still objective experiences, phenomena, but there is something that is aware of, of those. There is something that is inside or that is the subject of those objective experiences. We figure out, we understand eventually That just like the Porsche and the Ferrari and possibly the, the job and the friend and, and any objective phenomenal experience eventually leaves us and that includes those spiritual experiences of positive feelings, positive thoughts. We see that it's the nature of any objective experience, of any phenomenal experience, to come and go. No matter how subtle the state of mind becomes, it keeps changing. The body keeps changing. The people around me keep changing. Everything keeps on changing. So there must be something which is not a thing that is not changing. Otherwise, we could not be aware of these phenomena that are changing, that are coming and going. There must be something permanent. 
something unchanging in our experience. Just now we can see there is sense perception, sight, smell, the clothes on our skin, the sensations of us sitting or lying down, sounds, thoughts, feelings, dreams, visions, images. All of it appears to us, in us, to something that is unchanging. Something that is kind of the background, the substratum, the canvas of the painting of our lives. The silent background that is prior to all of those phenomenal objective experiences or objects. At that point, often there is kind of two pathways for many. When the material promises of happiness have not fulfilled everything that we were told as kids, as from society, what will bring about this happiness that we're all seeking for when Earlier or later, we figure out that somehow it hasn't quite worked out, at least not in the way that we intuitively were expecting, that it's something that is kind of should, should last, that should be with us, at least most of the time, we may think. And then we, we may seek in spirituality, so-called spirituality for this happiness. And then we may learn some phenomenal breath work techniques, some special techniques, some something or some encounter with some magical Baba that will give us some magical touch on the forehead and the light started to pour out of us. All of that has its place. But no matter how beautiful the experiences were, those spiritual experiences, they will leave us and then we'll try to get them back. And mostly somehow they won't come back in the same way. So very often we come to a point to a, like a split in the road, so to speak. And, and many, many kind of will even drop spirituality at that point. It's like, ah, okay, this was, it was just one more empty promise of society. I got my 
epiphany, my samadhi, and then and for a while it may last and I'll be happy deeper happy apparently maybe than when I bought the the Porsche or the house, but still somehow it it left me and, and this pain, suffering, misery in me and in the world somehow didn't vanish with those experiences. So many give up, so to speak. At that point, it's like, okay, that's life. That's just how life is. I had my, I found God and, and it's there somehow. It's me. But somehow now I have to attend back to to the world, to my kids, to my job, to I leave my guru, I I come back from India and get a job and some normal clothes and a haircut and off we go. Back to square one. But some of us somehow intuitively know that this this was not it. This is this awakening experience, this spiritual experience, this wonderful experiences, even they left me that I still there is. There must be more. Somehow, some of us do remember that this happiness is still there and it is our nature. And somehow we still haven't quite figured out how to make it permanent, so to speak, make it last. This is often the point when we are coming across Advaita, non-duality, satsang. So here we are. If things couldn't make this happiness last. If people couldn't make this happiness last, if experiences, no matter how beautiful, subtle, special, couldn't make that happiness last, so what's what's left? if we have this intuition. Otherwise, we just give up and we just submit to the fact that happiness is coming and going and we have to deal with it in one way or another. This is when we take the other path. But satsang, non-duality, it may come in different words. We may call it knowledge, classical Advaita Vedanta, jnana, or freedom, or liberation, or enlightenment. We have to see clearly that if it's knowledge or liberation, freedom, at that point when the 
phenomenal things were seen through that they don't bring the happiness. So this moksha, this freedom is gonna bring about this happiness. No matter from where, from which, from which society, no matter what we call it, we would not still not seek the liberation, the knowledge, the void, if it would not promise us the happiness. That's firstly very clearly to be seen. If this knowledge that is kind of beyond the phenomenal objective experience, the phenomenal experience, the things would not promise me happiness, I would be not interested in it. If I get this jnana, this understanding, and it comes with misery, I will run very fast, probably, away from it. If enlightenment would come with unhappiness, What we call happiness here is not a positive emotion. It's not a state of body and mind. So there might be some confusion sometimes when we use the word happiness. We could call it love, we could call it peace, we could call it the absence of lack, the absence of problems. No matter what we call it, the result is that we are happy. When there is peace, we are happy. When there is love, we are happy. When we don't lack anything, when we don't need anything, when we don't look for anything, we're happy. It is part of the confusion sometimes and we distinguish or oh, this is pure joy and this is happiness and happiness is a state of the body and mind that was created by achieving something, by fulfilling a wish. And it's something different than this pure joy that is emerging, this la joie de vivre, we spoke about many times. But this la joie de vivre is the happiness. There is not a real happiness and a false happiness. There's just happiness. It's like there is not two realities, not two consciousnesses. There's just one reality, one consciousness, and one happiness. So how come that 
we got that so wrong that we think somehow this happiness, this joy, this peace, this is something that, that comes and goes. Like silence seems to be something that comes and goes in the absence or in the presence of sounds. Where in reality we experience in the happiness and the joy of our coming together as a shared being the silence is very loud, independent of the sounds of the words. For most of us, we recognize it to be ground of all sounds, from which all sounds emerge and dissolve back into But somehow there is still this confusion, it seems this silence is something else than this happiness, maybe. Still. It doesn't show up quite obviously that it is actually the happiness that we are seeking. out of a lifelong habit of confusion, of misunderstanding. And there is the key for our freedom, for our happiness that we spoke so many times about understanding. If experience won't do, if things won't do, something must have the power to bring about this lasting happiness, this freedom. That is the understanding, the knowledge. We remove the confusion, we remove the wrong thinking and the consequent wrong quote-unquote feelings. Understanding lands and happiness grows, so to speak. Apparently. Most likely, it will still seem as something that grows through understanding. But maybe this understanding which you all know has nothing to do with the mind. Maybe understanding is just another word for this happiness. Where we through understanding for a split second, for a moment,
overcome wrong thinking and feeling maybe. Or simply for a moment, we understood, we, we, we dropped the need to know, we dropped the need to understand. It's like when we achieve the thing in the first place, we fulfilled the desire and we were for a moment desireless, wishless, and boom, there was the happiness. The mind concluded that it came from the achieved object or from that person, but we maybe just tapped in to this happiness that is desirelessness, wishlessness. So when understanding happens, the need to know in the mind, the need to figure things out, drops away. The difference is we don't need a new thing to renew this understanding. Once we understood, it's there. That's why you all have no questions. Once we understand, it lasts. It's not like an experience that comes and goes. It's not a thought. It's not a feeling. It's not an object. Understanding knowledge, jnana, is our true nature, is happiness. So we're getting closer, possibly. So, Satsang, for example.